Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Aircraft carriers are among the most formidable warships ever constructed. Designed to function as a seagoing airbase, these massive vessels can carry upwards of 100 aircraft and as many as 5,000 crew members. There is so much technology and working parts aboard an aircraft carrier that the average operational cost is between $6 million and $8 million daily. Though they are among the most advanced naval ships in operation today, aircraft carriers have been around nearly as long as the airplane. Though they existed during World War I, they didn't see widespread use until World War II, when air power and the means to move it from one place to another truly became a decisive factor in military victories. Modern Nimitz-class carriers are nuclear-powered, over 1,000 feet long, and boast a price tag upwards of $10 billion. Aircraft carriers are divided up into specific sections, each of which has its purpose, features, and duties. It's not unlike a normal airbase. There are crew quarters, one or more hangar bays, and, of course, a flight deck. The flight deck covers the majority of the ship's deck so that aircraft have ample room to take off and land. However, even the most powerful planes need assistance getting off the ground with so little runway to work with. This is where the highly innovative Catabar system comes in. The Catabar system features a catapult-assisted takeoff mechanism in which a steam or hydraulic-powered launching mechanism is used to push the aircraft to much faster speeds in a short amount of time. Here, you can see a brand new catapult system being installed aboard the Nimitz-class aircraft carrier USS George Washington. The metal tubing you see here is the cylinder into which the steam will be released. When this happens, it pushes a shuttle attached to the aircraft's landing gear forward at over 150 miles per hour. The use of steam allows for relatively good control and power. Still, carriers worldwide intend to switch to an electromagnetic launching system. Aside from the flight deck, the two most important parts of an aircraft carrier are the bubble and the island. The bubble is the area beneath the flight deck where the catapults are controlled. In fact, its technical name is the Integrated Catapult Control Station.
From the bubble, crew members can safely observe and control flight deck operations and communicate with pilots, flight crews, and more. The island is also essential to flight deck operations, but it also incorporates ship operations ranging from navigation to communication and beyond. The island is a structure several stories high. It contains the bridge, the control tower, the primary flight control or PryFly, and the various radar and communication antenna and equipment needed for the carrier to complete its mission. It's hard to understand just how massive aircraft carriers really are. Only the world's biggest cruise ships, container ships, and oil tankers are larger than your average carrier. And like all large ships, small, tight maneuvers are not possible at low speeds. So, when an aircraft carrier approaches a shallow port or docking area, it requires the assistance of one or more tugboats to navigate the area properly. These powerful little ships push and pull the aircraft carrier into position. However, this is not the case when the carrier is out in the middle of the ocean. The U.S. Navy is dedicated to ensuring all of its aircraft carriers are immensely durable and tough. Here you can see the USS Gerald Ford undergoing what's known as shock testing. This is where powerful explosives are set off within a certain distance from the ship to test its ability to sustain operations and validate the hull's hardness. Combat is extremely demanding on both crew members and the ship itself. Only by simulating that environment as closely as possible can the Navy get a real estimation of the vessel's capabilities. For their size, aircraft carriers are quite fast and extremely maneuverable. They are even able to pull off high-speed turns in order to evade enemy vessels or weapons. In fact, these vessels can move within 700 square miles in just half an hour. This can be expanded to a 6,000 square mile area in an hour and a half. Here, the USS Abraham Lincoln demonstrates its evasive capabilities, moving at high speeds while executing fast turns and direction changes. If a submarine or other enemy vessel were to attempt to track a moving carrier, it would have an extremely difficult time doing so. Combine this with the ship's sophisticated electronic scrambling and jamming capabilities, and you have a formidable wartime opponent. It's important to note that most aircraft carriers will remain at sea for months at a time or more. But with up to 5,000 crew members on board, these ships require the occasional resupply. They also require frequent refueling, sometimes while in the middle of the ocean. These processes are accomplished via a technique known as underway replenishment. 
Here, you can see the USS Abraham Lincoln receiving a connecting line from the USNS Leroy Grumman. Once in place, the line is used to connect a long fuel hose. This hose is then inserted directly into the fuel tanks of the aircraft carrier, allowing fuel to be pumped from the Grumman while both vessels are still underway. Aircraft carriers are truly magnificent ships, but what makes them powerful adversaries is their ability to store, launch, and land a wide variety of military aircraft. And it's not just the planes themselves that need to be stored aboard the vessel. but all the munitions required to arm them as well. In fact, handling the bombs, missiles, bullets, and other ordnance stored on the vessel is one of the most important jobs on an aircraft carrier. On a Nimitz-class aircraft carrier, the weapons are stored off the sides of the hangar bay along the main deck. After prepping, the weapons are transported to their aircraft using a series of lifts, ramps, and small dollies. There are also machine shops, aboard ships where ordnance can be modified if necessary. Once on the flight deck, these bombs and missiles are attached to the aircraft's hardpoints by trained crew members known as aviation ordnance men. These men and women use special dollies to help move these weapons into position. But attaching them is still a team effort. Thanks to its relatively small size and versatile capabilities, one of the McDonnell Douglas F-A-18 Hornets is a mainstay aboard aircraft carriers. Here you can see both Hornets and Super Hornets taking off from the USS George W. Bush. The latter are larger and more advanced than the original F-A-18s, which were introduced all the way back in the 1970s. You can clearly see the Catabar system attached to the forward landing gear. This propels the F-18s forward at roughly 170 miles per hour, allowing them to become airborne in just 300 feet. Before taking off, the afterburners are ignited against a blast shield, which protects crew members from the thrust. This ensures the plane will already be operating at flight speed when it reaches the end of the flight deck. The second half of the CATABAR acronym refers to the barrier-arrested recovery that allows aircraft to come to a complete stop with only the length of a football field to work with. Though it is technically part of the same system, the arresting end of the Catabar design utilizes a very different mechanism. 
At the rear of the ship, special cables or arresting wires are stretched out over the landing area. Pilots must catch one of these with a special tail hook affixed to the back end of their fuselage. This necessitates they land with their nose up with the tail hook pointing downward. When the hook makes contact, the cable transfers the aircraft's kinetic energy to a special hydraulic system located beneath the flight deck. This is essentially a cable and pulley system connected to a hydraulic cylinder. As the plane's arresting hook pulls on the cable, the cylinders engage, using the resulting pressurization to stop the aircraft. Small planes like the FA-18 are not the only aircraft capable of using the Catabar system to operate from an aircraft carrier. The C-2 Greyhound, shown here, boasts a 56-foot fuselage and an 80-foot wingspan. As a cargo aircraft, it is often tasked with carrying up to 10,000 pounds of equipment and weapons. However, the Catabar system is so powerful that this large plane has little to no problem operating from the limited space. When safely aboard the ship, the Greyhound's wings fold against the fuselage to save space when the aircraft is being stored. Those aircraft not kept on the flight deck for quick launch are kept in the hangar bay on the main deck of the carrier. Moving these airplanes around this very crowded environment takes a lot of slow, deliberate work. Fortunately, there are several large elevators connected to the sides of the hangar. These are used to carry the planes from that deck to the flight deck for takeoff and to return them to the hangar bay after landing. Besides the maintenance of the aircraft, the hangar bay is also where drills and other logistical duties are performed. The average military aircraft requires constant maintenance to make sure they are kept in fighting condition. This sometimes includes taking various components of the aircraft apart, replacing them, and testing them all within the same space. Although they are more than 1,000 feet long, aircraft carriers operate just like other boats. When they need to remain in one place, they deploy an anchor. The only difference here is that an aircraft carrier's anchor weighs upwards of 30,000 pounds and has a chain that is 1,400 feet long. Both releasing and retrieving an anchor of this size requires a team of people, as well as powerful equipment. As with any military vessel, it is hard work of the crew that keeps aircraft carriers and all their various components working as they should. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.